Are you still in a jet? Yes. Okay. Really? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Sorry. I don't have air radar. I don't have lock on bullshit. You know what I have? You have a Gatling gun. Gatling gun. Hey, you're watching Jay's Two Cents, where the advice is always free. And today we're going to go ahead and discuss AMD versus Intel and PC gaming performance. I got a lot of messages asking me, okay, you said that we don't need the latest and greatest processor, but you didn't say whether or not you need AMD or Intel. You're right, I didn't mention that because it pretty much warrants a video all of its own. It's a very debated topic, and I think it goes without saying that Intel is almost always the clear winner when it comes to gaming. It's pretty sad the way the Core i5-2500K is outperforming the FX8120 in stock speeds, which is what I currently use. However, if you look at the charts that measure pure processing power of these processors, it tends to be a different story. The 8-core and 6-core processors, or the i7s and the FX8 series, or 8000 series, are definitely beating the i5s. However, the questions that I was asked were purely gaming questions. Most of these people that are asking me questions are not asking about doing video editing or encoding or Photoshop or any of that kind of software. They want to build a gaming machine. So they want to know, do I go AMD or do I go Intel? But I got to say, if you're building purely a gaming machine, the Core i5-2500K by Intel is a beast of a chip for gaming. Downside of the 2500K is that it's not available anymore. Most places either have it as a refurb or some sort of a backstock, and if you can find it, they're typically on sale extremely cheap. We're talking $160. I've seen it as low as $150 before at Micro Center if you were to buy it with a motherboard, and it was just an amazing processor. The equivalent to the 2500K on Ivy Bridge is the 3570K. The 3570K is roughly 10% faster than the 2500K, so that's just amazing. But if you truly want to go all out and you don't have a budget constraint, Definitely go for an i7. I know that contradicts a little bit what I said in the other video, but hear me out. But if you have absolutely no budget constraint and you're just asking me, what is the baddest computer I can build today? You're going to want to go with the Intel i7-3770K. It has the four physical cores as well as the four logical cores giving you eight threads of processing power. So that means you could have all kinds of programs going while you're gaming in the background and you're not going to see any slowdown whatsoever. In most instances, you're not going to see a slowdown with the 2500K or the 3570K either. Now, up until this point, I've only talked about Intel. So why do I have AMD? Because I know people are going to ask me, Dude, you're pitching Intel, you're pitching Intel, so why do you have an AMD? To answer that question, we've got to rewind a year ago. A year ago, I had to build a PC on a budget. I had $1,200 to spend, and I had nothing to reuse. I was moving back to PC from Mac, and so I had to build everything from scratch. And we're talking every cable, every screw, everything I needed had to be bought. So I went with AMD simply because at the time I was able to get a 965 Black Edition, which is a Phenom 2, an X4, for $100 flat. Now if we compare the Phenom X4 965 Black Edition for 100 bucks with the equivalent i5 or i7 of the time, which I believe was the 920 was the i7 and the 720 was the i5. And if I'm wrong, just tell me in the comments what they actually were so people don't get confused. It doesn't really matter, but it's nice to have the right numbers out there. The Phenom 2 X4, especially the 965 itself, was like the golden chip for AMD when it came to gaming. I loved that chip. I was easily able to overclock it to 4 gigs. There was no problem there. Didn't even have to run water on it to do it and my games ran smooth. Now, yes, it was being beaten by Intel. However, it was just unbeatable in the FPS per dollar range. It was, a, it was an amazing chip. Now, someone might be asking themselves, okay, so fine, you had your 965, you loved it, and you upgraded. Why did you not upgrade to Intel? In between upgrading the processors, my previous motherboard took a shit. So, I had a decision to make. I've got to buy a new motherboard anyway. So, if I go Intel... Then I have to buy a processor too, which would then say, okay, I'm back on a budget because I don't want to spend too much money, which means I'm going to buy bottom shelf Intel. And 
My 965 was already beating the bottom shelf Intel for the same price because the only thing you could buy for 100 bucks at the time was an i3. And I wasn't about to go i3. So I went ahead and stuck with AMD. Now, when I upgraded the processor, if I wanted to go Intel, I had to buy a new motherboard. So I already had a cross, an Asus Republic of Gamers Crosshair 5, which is their best AMD motherboard you can possibly buy when it comes to feature set. I was pretty much stuck in this path. So I'm sort of convincing myself it's worth it to hang out with AMD and just wait it out for Piledriver, which is AMD's next generation processor. And if it is a complete letdown, I've already decided that my next upgrade path will be an Intel. And it will likely be an i7 because as I mentioned, I need the power. So here it is, here's my recommendation. If you're going purely gaming, this is a gaming machine, and you were on a budget, and you need to buy a processor that's $150 or less, go on Amazon, go on Google, try and find yourself either a used Phenom 2 X4 965 or even a 975. You might even find a 985 out there, which are all great. They're all unlocked. You can overclock all of them. Or find yourself a 1090 or 1100T. Those were the next generation between the FX and the Phenom 4s. They were great processors. And not to mention their 6-core processors. So you get a little more power and the gaming performance on those are great. You'll see on here the chart for the Phenom 2 X6 1090T is beating my FX 8120 at stock speeds when it comes to gaming performance. If you need the extra cores, you can get the 8120. But the only way you're going to really see the performance out of it is to overclock it. At stock speeds, I was less than thrilled with it. I was going to take it back, then I decided, let's go ahead and just overclock this bitch and see where it goes. And I'm extremely happy. Here we are now, going on, shoot, six months later, and I'm as happy as can be. Now, if you're looking for a processor that's over $150, it makes no sense to go with AMD. For instance, you can get the i5 3570K for $220. Now, the equivalent from AMD today would be the FX... 8150 and it's $199 so you spend $20 more and you're going to get the i5 which is going to do a million times better in games than the FX8150. If you have to spend between $150 and $200 and you just do not want to go AMD but you don't know what to buy you're probably going to be stuck looking for a 2500k that's stuck in somebody's inventory. However that's an early 2011 chip and they're just not really around anymore. And I know that's going to ruffle feathers because the discussion of AMD versus Intel is just as heated as console versus PC, Ford versus Chevy, Honda versus everybody else. So there it is. That's my advice. So there you have it. My two cents regarding AMD and Intel on gaming machines. I'm using AMD and I'm happy. What are you using and why? Put it in the comments. Click the video on the left if you haven't seen my video regarding what to know before you buy or build your next PC, and click the video on the right to see my commentary and opinions regarding the Armored Kill expansion pack for Battlefield 3. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, subscribe, and click that like button if this video helped you in any way.